This yep. conference will now be recorded. Felipe, just want to double check. It's Anthony Verderam. Can you hear me? Uh, hey, farm. I can hear you. All right, thank you. I'll mute myself now. No problem. Everybody can just mute your line. Hearing some feedback. While everyone is waiting, uh, Jeremy, what is the anticipated snowfall? We're counting on uh, up to 18 inches here at Tweed. Jeremy, how are you? Oh, he's muted too. Okay. Hey, John, are you on? I think I see you on here. I am now. All right. Ready to go when you are. I'm ready. We got a quorum? Yep. All right. So hello, everyone. December 16th, 4.02 PM, the Tweed New Haven Board of Directors meeting is now in session. We need a motion to approve the minutes of November 18th, 2020. So moved, John. Thanks, Peter. You need a second? Second. Again. Karina, Karen, thanks. Any discussion or amendments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Opposed abstentions? Motion carries. Mr. Scan, you ready for the executive director's report? I am, and uh, good afternoon to everybody. Hopefully, uh, you all are getting ready for the storm today. Um, a few uh, things to go over. First of all, um, I want to make the announcement that our meeting today and going forward will be recorded from now on. Um, that's just an, an expanded effort for transparency, something that I've been really committed to and Jeremy and Felipe have been helping me out with a lot to make sure that we're being fully transparent for the folks that might not be able to make our meetings or watch these live. They can now go on to our website and watch recordings of these meetings. Um, and uh, we can walk them through how to do that. But uh, it's under the About Airport section. And if they go to About Airport and then Airport Authority, they can see uh, the recordings of these meetings. Um, another thing that we did, uh, again, in the interest of transparency, was that we had gone uh, several months ago to get an extension of our glycol permit. Glycol is the substance that we use to de-ice the planes. Uh, we have to get a permit to do so from deep every uh, few years. And in the process of doing that, some of the neighbors had objected to us getting a longer term permit. We actually sat down with them, uh, worked it out. And as a result of that, um, are now publishing, uh, which something that we voluntarily agreed to do, we're publishing the measurements of that glycol every month on our website immediately after the board meeting. So 
Obviously, uh, those reports right now are reading zero because we're not treating any planes. And even if there were planes here, we wouldn't be de-icing them right, right yet. But um, in the interest of transparency, those are now also uh, in that same section. Um, so that's transparency news. Um, in terms of good news, uh, we literally just got it a few minutes ago, but Airports Council International, which is a humongous deal in the industry, ACI, some of you may have heard of that, um, they run an airport health accreditation program, and they just wrote to me a few minutes ago that after reviewing the evidence presented through our evaluation process, your airport has shown that it is providing a safe environment or a safe airport experience for all travelers, which is in line with the recommended health measures established in the ACI Aviation Business Restart and Recovery Guidelines and the ICAO Council Aviation Recovery Task Force recommendations, along with industry best practices. The accreditation is valid for the next 12 months. And, um, you know, that's a big deal for us. Obviously, um, you know, we, we know that um, we people are very nervous about flying. Um, but I think when they see that we take this very seriously and that we're being awarded an accreditation from a national uh, entity, it's looking at all the different airports. I would note that Bradley is not one of the airports that received this. Uh, so we're the only airport in Connecticut that did. I think it speaks to how seriously we're taking this. And I want to give a special shout out to Brian on our team. Uh, you know, Brian has really done a tremendous job of making sure that we're doing everything we can to, to provide a, a very safe and clean environment. Uh, Monique uh, on our team has also been doing an amazing job of, of making sure that that's happening on a constant basis. And uh, once we do resume flights, which I think is going to be sooner than, than folks think, um, we will be uh, touting that very widely. Um, to show people that we we are taking this very seriously and that others are recognizing how seriously we're taking it. So shout out to our team, especially Brian and Monique for their hard work on that. Right. Um, Sean, 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 did we ever get that in the past or is this the first year? Let's start tracing Jeremy, do you know if we've that? I think it's just another COVID. I can control the lights, the time, everything. Hey, um, if, if everybody can mute their line, I'm getting a lot of feedback. So if, if everyone could just make sure they're muting their phone, that'd be great. Yeah, that, that's a new accreditation um, as a result of uh, COVID. So that's, that's something new. Oh, okay. So just a, just a few other things, guys. Um, first, uh, we obviously have our first big snowstorm, not only of the year, but in a couple of years. And uh, Jeremy and the team are preparing for that. And uh, we've been working with... Uh, our, our friends over at Robinson to make sure that we're meeting all their needs in terms of flights. There really isn't a ton scheduled tonight. Uh, and because of safety reasons, we are really sort of going to run uh, a much more reduced operation than we normally would. Uh, we will clear the runway, obviously, and, and do what we need to do. Uh, but we're not having people come in, especially because we don't want a bunch of our employees, you know, working together in truck and close quarters and, and doing the stuff that we kind of normally need to do given the fact that we don't have any commercial flights right now. So we're just taking those extra safety precautions, but obviously we will have folks uh, working tonight and tomorrow to, to clean up the, uh, the airport. Um, we have our next round of the technical advisory committee and the uh, citizen advisory committee on January 5th. And that will be followed on January 7th with our next master plan community meeting. We're going to be really rolling that out next week. Um, but as, as folks probably remember, we had uh, two meetings, one in East Haven, one in New Haven, about a year ago, actually. Um, and we had hoped to do a lot more in, in the year 2020, but obviously COVID made that difficult. And some of the restrictions about uh, crowd size and, and gatherings made it very hard for us to do a public meeting. But we didn't really want to go much further and not do that meeting, especially since the process is gonna wrap up in March. And so um, we are gonna do another one of those meetings uh, via Microsoft Teams on January 7th. That meeting will be from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. The link to that uh, presentation and the Teams link will be up on the Master Plan website. Uh, we'll put it on our website. It'll be on all our social media pages. We'll get it out to the press uh, to announce that next week in full. But, uh, just mark that on your calendars. We will be having a, a new meeting on the 7th. Um, those of you who were able to make our board meeting last month heard an update from Jeff Wood from McFarland Johnson. That's our master plan consultant. Um, they've been doing great work this year despite the circumstances to 
really get this right, uh, do some serious studying of, of where we're at uh, and where the market is at, where the industry is at, and, and where that will leave us. And I think they've gotten to a really good place, and we're excited to show uh, show the results of that on January 7th and again probably uh, in, in February and March. Um, so, so look out for that. Um, just two more things to share. Um, you know, you're probably all watching uh, just as I am as to what's happening in Washington with regard to the new round of stimulus. It seems like uh, from texting with my former boss and, and talking to some former colleagues in, in the U.S. Senate that uh, a deal is about to be struck uh, probably at some point later this evening or tomorrow, uh, which means that I think that there will be another round of funding for both the airline industry and the airports. Uh, right now, the number that I've been seeing and, and heard is $45 billion. Uh, it was $60 billion last time, so a little bit of a reduction, but obviously uh, still a sizable amount of money. And uh, I would just, uh, without saying anything or breaking any news here, I would just uh, say to this group that I expect that uh, if that is to pass, uh, we may see some expanded activity here sooner rather than later uh, from an air carrier. Um, so just stay tuned for information about that. Uh, but I, I would say that I think good news is, is coming there. Um, and then uh, similar to that, in terms of being stay tuned, there's a lot happening at the airport, despite the fact that we don't have a commercial carrier right now. We're obviously in uh, in pretty deep working on the master plan. We've been having some really positive conversations with a number of different carriers about New Haven and uh, what service here might look like at some point in 2021. And uh, as I said uh, last month when we talked about the American news, I remain more confident than ever that good things are on the horizon for us. This has been a very difficult year. Certainly got dealt a bit of a curveball here and, and took a step back in terms of just the, the timing of everything. But all the fundamentals that we've always known about the, the positive momentum that we have are there. And uh, in, in talking to everybody, you know, it's going to be a while till the aviation industry comes back in full. Um, you know, people say maybe it, it might take two or three years even. But uh, I think the demand uh, among the general public to fly again will be much, much higher in the aftermath of a vaccine. And I think that you will see uh, corresponding activity here at the airport to meet that demand uh, in a few months once the, the flying public is feeling a little more confident, once that vaccine is out, uh, and, and once we can begin to offer them flights again here at Tweed. So um, all that's to say, Mr. Chairman, uh, I, I'm still excited about what's going on. And I think 2021 is gonna be a good year for us after a relatively difficult 2020. Thank you, Mr. Scanlon. Any questions for the executive director? I'd like to say I concur with, with Sean. I think 2021 is going to be a, a very good year for Tweed. And we're looking forward to it. It's still very optimistic. Uh, Sean, I'm glad the meetings are being recorded. You know, when I logged in, it said meetings are being recorded, and I just assumed they were always were it. So it's, uh, it's kind of funny. So that's, a, that's the right thing to do. Mr. Sean, are you ready for the – I know, Mike, you're here. I, I want Kevin to – uh, go through the uh, finance committee and Kevin, if you want to introduce Mike, you can. If not, I will. Sure, I'll start, Mr. Chairman. Uh, everyone has the monthly report. Um, overall, another great month, um, financially, anyways. You know, we had a net uh, 65, and I think we're 250 in the black um, year to date. Now, this is, um, we're starting to see the reduced numbers from the airline. You know, this is September we're looking at. So the staff has been terrific, but Sean and Jeremy and Felipe and everyone has been working on it. Shown that we can survive for a while very well until we get this new services, either American coming back or whoever's going to come. We are a viable airport and financially we can hold our own for quite a while. Uh, as far as the, the CARES Act money, the, the first CARES Act money, um, we still have 11 months of that money left. We had 15 months. We've only used four, so we're in good shape there. Um, just let everyone know. You know, obviously we know about the when American or the commercial airline stops flying, we lose a landing. There's also the float fees, the jet bridge fees, um, the associated terminal office space rentals, and airport parking is affected. So it actually affects a lot of our operation. And the fact that we're still able to get these numbers 
says a lot about what everyone at the airport's been doing to reduce costs and to watch every single penny, which we've been doing for years. But really, it, it's so very important right now. And, and it's a great uh, job to Jeremy and the entire team. Um, so that's all I have for that. Um, Mr. Chairman, just want me to uh, introduce Mike or yeah, let's see if anybody has any questions for you first. And we have any questions for Kevin on the on the finance committee report. All right, Kevin, you want to introduce Mike? Great. Um, everyone that's been here a little while should know Mike Salikian. Um, I do want to say one thing, Mike, before you go on. There's a big report. Everyone should have received it. The one key thing that I want to talk about very, very quickly is on page 35, which should be the very end of the report, is the financial statement findings. No material findings is basically means we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. He has no issues. That to me, you know, we can look at the numbers and we can comb through them, but that one statement says a lot about how this airport is being run. So I just wanted to point that out. Michael, I'd like to turn it over to you. Thanks. I think Kevin just gave my report. So I think we're done. Listen, I, I appreciate the opportunity to be uh, uh, part of the audit again for the June 30, 2020 year. And I think I've met most of you in, in the past, but I want to say, Sean, it was a pleasure to meet you face to face, at least here. Uh, I haven't had the opportunity yet. And I want to say up front <clears throat> that, um, like everybody this past uh, nine months now, it's been a challenge. Most CPA firms, including ours, has been doing almost every audit remotely. It is a challenge. It's, uh, it hasn't been that easy. I will tell you, and my entire practice is doing audits of nonprofits and governmental entities. Um, about 25% of our client base has not even started the audit stuff yet. So the fact that we're sitting here now to do at least going over draft statements, but ready to finalize them is a testament, I think, to Jeremy, Felipe, Al's doing too. I want to say, you know, you guys are in a good place. You've got another CPA firm that kind of comes in and, and assists in getting the books audit ready. We don't make any audit adjustments. And uh, I know Sean and Jeremy were very much a part of uh, getting this stuff done getting us all the information we needed. You know, it's still still a paper chase, even if it's PDFs and stuff being sent to us. So I really want to thank them all. Uh, it was, from our standpoint, it was pretty seamless. Felipe may not think so because he had to send me a lot of stuff for the uh, the AIP uh, report we do. But, um, but I want to thank them all. So I want to make sure you all know that up front. Um, Kevin really stole my thunder, I have to tell you, because those are the two most important pages in this report. And I want to remind the group that since you do receive and spend more than $300,000 of state money, if you look at uh, page uh, 33, you'll see you know, primarily it's the $1.5 million. But the State Single Audit Act applies to the authority, and that means that if in our audit we could not find documentation or it wasn't provided to us and there were costs that we were questioning and we couldn't get satisfied, we would have to report on that in those two pages, that 34 and 35 that Kevin pointed out. And the state obviously gets a copy of this and would see it. So it's a very powerful two pages of saying that in all the testing we did, we had no findings. We had no question for us, and in addition to that, and you probably heard me use these terms before, there were no significant deficiencies or material weaknesses in your system of, of internal controls that we would have had to report to the board on. So, yeah, I, I, there, there really is, uh, you know, there really isn't anything that rises to that level. I think we might have had some conversations during the audit on maybe some other minor things, but... Uh, um, so, and I, and I kind of, I kind of put a, I'll wrap that kind of comment up at the end, but I just want to go through the statements very quickly. Pages one to 10, it's management's discussion and analysis. This was really provided to us by you folks, primarily Sean and Jeremy, and, and I know Al helped 
with the, with that. It's really taking last year's commentary and updating it for the most part. The one thing I'm going to point out that is new, shouldn't be any surprise to anybody. There's language in there talking about COVID-19 and what the effects are primarily for 2021. You know, when I was listening to Sean give the good news uh, end of things, just keep in mind, and I'll leave this up to the board, these statements are still in draft form. They're dated December 15th. Uh, that doesn't mean you can't edit and maybe want to put something in. I just, you know, if there's any of those things you just mentioned, Sean, that you think might be worthwhile to put in maybe the management's discussion or even in a footnote, I'll leave that to your discretion, but uh, um, but that's really the major change, the COVID-19 disclosures. And I know you guys actually wove some of that into the uh, management's discussion analysis. And it's really, it's something that every financial statement that you'll be seeing out there is gonna have to talk about it. So, uh, especially in the industry that uh, the, air, the airport is in. Um, the rest of the financial statements and disclosures are pretty similar to last year. I think this kind of, you know, when I when I was doing the analytical review of the operations, I don't think it's any uh, surprise to anybody that, especially in the last quarter of the June 30, 20 year, operations were affected and that is kind of reflected in the financial statements themselves. You did get some of the uh, CARES Act money and there are some governmental reimbursements that show up in the, uh, you'll, you'll kind of see those on page uh, 12, uh, the 709,000. So that does make an increase in the authority's net position this year. And again, that's pretty much all explained in the MDNA and in the footnotes. Um, nothing really here jumps out. I mean, everything is down a little bit uh, and that's kind of to be expected. And I think I just went through in the footnotes, the most important thing, which is the, the last one on page 27, the, the subsequent events for COVID-19. And it's really just saying, you know, going forward is dependent on a lot of things. And Sean kind of touched on that. And again, if you feel it's appropriate to kind of even edit that even more, uh, you know, you can just let us know. But uh, the rest of the document is the same. It's the, uh, the compliance report that the federal yellow book requires, and then the state of Connecticut reports that go from page 33 to 35. But uh, the only other thing I do wanna to mention to you as a board, especially to the finance committee and, and with Kevin, and uh, we've talked about these things in the past, but they're, they're more pronounced now as everything is being done remotely. And I'm telling every board this these days, you know, because of electronic, and computerized op, uh, operations from a financial standpoint. You know, there's not a lot of people anymore in the accounting end of things. You know, you've got a few people, you've got an outside accounting firm, you've got a lot of eyes and ears, and that's great. But as a board, just keep in mind the cornerstone of a good system of internal control, and that's segregation of duties. And we understand the, 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 um, the special circumstance here where you've got a third party vendor, we've talked about this many times, namely airports, that is somewhat involved in the accounting end of things. And you've done some things to kind of mitigate that. But just keep in mind, just make sure that you know, there's not one person or just a couple of people that have control over everything. We don't have that situation really here. I think you've got those, those things in place to deal with it. But, Keep that uppermost in your mind as always. So um, again, good news on our end, nothing to really report. I, I really uh, want to again, thank everybody for, for making the process pretty smooth. And, uh, and I wish we were sitting here with all the clients getting things wrapped up now. And just so you know, this is technically due to the state December 31st. There are extensions available to, to those who need that. You guys don't have to worry about that. So. Uh, once the, the uh, report gets approved formally, we would just uh, uh, we uh, upload a digital copy to uh, OPM's website. That's how it works. So, Mike, I was going to jump in with the procedure. I'm pretty sure it was the 31st. And uh, thank you for everything. Uh, and and we're having Sean here also. I understand what you mean about you know Avport. You know, I think we have pretty good checks and balances. As you said, you're independent audit. You don't. Uh, 
put any of the information together it's given you. So that makes us feel very good. Sean, uh, it's, it's got to be done by the 31st unless there's a change. I think we, we, we can approve it tonight. Yeah, I, I'm okay with that. Just want to check with Jeremy and make sure there's no flags on his end. That's it. Uh, I think uh, you know we've reviewed it, um, and I think we're we're in a good position to move forward. I I, I don't really think we had enough time. You know, giving us a the 40 page document, you know, less than two hours before the board meeting is not a really good practice. I mean, I'm trying to get through it, but. We, we, you know, this all been happening, unfortunately. We have, time. we have plenty of time to get this done, so. And I'm okay with waiting. Well, if everybody else has been able to review it thoroughly, I'd, I'd be amazed. You're part, of, man, you're part of the board. You can take your time. Okay. Yeah, a little more time would be good. Okay. Can, can anybody tell me, so there's... Something that did catch my eye in here. I think that Northeast Ramp is paying us uh, access and egress fee. I don't remember who that is. Those are the, the key hangers. It's a through the fence operation. So they, they pay an access fee. Um, they don't lease any land. It's private property, but they pay access to get on the, the airfield. To, the to do what? The platform is no big deal. Michael tell you that. So we can wait until January to approve this. Well, if it it, it it has to get uploaded by December 31st and sent without an extension. I guess if you got if you if the board approves it with the understanding that there could be changes going forward, as long as you document that. I mean, I you know, a final copy would have to get sent without an extension by December 31st. So, but it right, doesn't matter. We call us on the thirty-first, and we could we could do it. You know, uh, uh, filing for an extension is not a big deal either. So, it's not. But, but John, maybe maybe we can approve it now, so we don't have to have another meeting in December, and then or get an extension. And if anybody has a problem with it, after they take the time to read, they can call you, and then we can reconvene and 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 not have it filed. Is that okay? Yeah, we can wait till the thirty first to have it filed. Then, right, Mike? The thirty. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm okay with that. What about Dan and Rich? Yeah, I I would propose that you know, Friday end of the day, end of the business day, Friday. Any comments need to come in. Otherwise, um, if if you don't receive comments, then I would, uh, you know, I would say let's let's approve it subject to any comments coming in not later than the end of business Friday. Okay, Dan, I'm going to take that as a term of a motion. Yep. I'll second that. Thanks. Thanks, Ben. Any, any discussion? So you know, the motion was made and, and second in terms of, of proving it. Any, any, any comments have to be in by Friday, the end of business on Friday. If not, it goes in. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, say aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Any nays? That motion carries. Thanks, Mike. Thank you all, and uh, continue good luck. And good to hear some good news from Sean too. And uh, stay safe out there. Thank you all. Thank Have you too. All right. Good report, Thanks. Thank you. Um. So. No action items. Jeremy, are you ready for the airport manager's report? I am, Mr. Chairman. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, Sean uh, hit on a lot of items that I would have, um, and uh, we're all on the same page on um, you know, everything that's going on. I'll just make a few more notes. Um, our tenant meeting has been rescheduled uh, on fri to Friday, December 18th at 11 o'clock because of the snow. Um, and we're, uh, our crew's on standby, um, ready to go. We're kind of, uh, that was kind of a dread, but it's also something we kind of look forward to and, uh, get out there and kind of clear our minds and just a little different change of pace. So, uh, but we'll be, uh, ready for, for activity. We've been in contact with um, the FBO 
and other airport tenants and um, you know we'll be ready for um, operations tomorrow um, continuing with the, uh, the the finance theme um, once this this audit is completed I will be forwarding that to the office of the governor um, that's the final piece of the report the annual report that the authority submits to the state um, and we're also in the uh, the the state was in the midst of doing uh, their audit of our of the authority's books um, last year for 17, 18, and 19, um, and they they stopped that process some time ago, and they just notified me last week that they're restarting that process for fiscal year 19, closing that that loop up. So. Um, I think we'll be in pretty good shape there. Um, and I'm not sure if they'll be starting on fiscal year 20 or if that'll be later on down the road, but I'll make sure to keep everyone, uh, Sean and, and the board in the loop on that. And uh, other than that, uh, we're still in the midst of our, our FAA CERT inspection, the administrative portion. It's done virtually, it's not in person, um, but that's in process. And then Felipe uh, sent out the manager's report. Again, just you know, some highlights that are going on. Uh, feel free to reach out if you have any questions on that. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Any questions for Jeremy? Yeah, John, I have, this is Peter. I do have a question for either Jeremy or Kevin. Uh, Fire away. I, I believe that we were deferring payments due uh, from American when the virus started. If that is true, yeah. are we even or do they owe us money? I can speak to that, Kevin, if you'd like, or? Yeah, go ahead, please. You might okay. also add the car issues too, if there's any sure. deferred payments sure. from the car issues. Yeah, so uh, let me speak to the budget. Last um, last meeting, I did make the commitment that we would go back and, and look at the budget um, and see, you know, how the impact of American pulling out would impact us. Um, I worked on that closely with Sean, and um, you know, based on our calculations, thank thankfully due to the stimulus money and the vacant positions we have available, um, we are. Um, projecting that we will remain in the black for the year. That being said, um, you know we're going to have a very close eye on um, you know our expenses. We're looking in every possible area to to, to save more uh, where we can, whether it be on you know utilities, you know shutting lights, you know but we're basically shutting the terminal down. Um, you know heat's heat's being lowered in the areas where it's not being used. Um, you know anything we can do. Um, we're, we're trying to, to cut costs, just anticipating that, um, you know, things can change in an instant and, um, you know, that cushion may be gone, you know, may not be what we think it is now. So uh, we're trying to be very proactive on that approach. Um, to your point about uh, the, um, you know, we did provide some relief to our tenants, American, as well as the rental cars. Um, American, we did give them um, until December to make um, their payments in full. I did reach out to our contact in American. I think I just heard today um, from uh, Karen in our um, office that um, American actually made the payments for the three months that they do owe us for rent. They are up to date on all of their operational fees, so the landing fees, fuel flowage. It was just the rent portion that we did defer. So um, I'm 99% confident that they are um, up to date. I will point out in the financials that you have in front of you, uh, we did make the same offer to the rental cars and there's been um, part of that arrangement was that they were deferred in their rent, but they're also, instead of being held to the minimum annual guarantee, they were only required to pay 10% of their concessions and that's just because you know the airport didn't have doesn't have any business to really provide to them 
um, and to hold them to that, that, uh, that the mag was, you know, just didn't seem like the right thing. So, however, with that, there will be, an, you will see an adjustment next month. Um, Avis and budget continue to pay the mag. So they've overpaid. Um, so we'll see it a, a, a slight adjustment down. I believe enterprise and national, um, are where they should be. Um, they are also, um, Avis and budget continue to operate as well as enterprise. They continue to pay rent. Um, they have pulled out most of their cars, um, uh, but they continue to pay rent, um, you know, in, until, you know, we, we kind of hear further about what the future of American is. If, if American were to pull out, is to pull out permanently, you might see um, some of the rental cars um, exercise their, their right to, to terminate their lease. But um, at this point, I don't think that would be likely. Um, so if, is there, does that answer your question, Peter? Yes, excellent. thank you very much. You're welcome. Peter, good question. Thanks, Jeremy. Any other questions for Jeremy? Any other business? Public information session. Anybody from the public who wishes to speak? Once, twice, three times. Seeing none, I want to wish everybody a best Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, a great New Year. I uh, wish you guys all the best. Stay safe and stay healthy. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I need a motion. Same here. Happy Hanukkah. Merry Christmas. Move, we adjourn. Second. Got a motion to adjourn by Peter. Second by Vin. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thanks, everyone. Meetings adjourned at 436. Stay safe. Take care. Happy holidays, everybody.